I really drill completing the square because if you can do completing the square, you can pretty much do the vertical and horizontal shifts and all that stuff. So that's why I do it. So with that being said, and the recorder is going, let's go ahead and any good movies this weekend? Anything going on? There's not any good movies, so. Georgia got beat, which I was going to, I knew Florida was going to beat Georgia. Clemson didn't win, but we all know it was the referee's fault and the stadium's fault and the, and the, well, who else's fault? The uh, football's fault, stadium's fault. That's one reason I don't like Clemson football is whenever they lose, Clemson fans usually blame everybody but the team or the other team or the, they blame everybody but who they supposed to blame. Oh, the referees were bought off. The football was deflated. That was a good game. And nobody's going to comment. So I guess we're just not going to. We'll just go ahead and start. Transformations. Well, before I, I'm not going to go through this right quick. I'm just going to go to this. Let me go to my handy dandy. OK. In the past, we have been talking about completing the square. And we get, let's go with f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 7, or minus 7. And we go x squared minus 2 plus blank is equal to 7 plus blank. Half of 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. x minus 1, quantity squared, is equal to 8. And f of x is equal to x minus 1, quantity squared, minus 8. This is what we call intercept form. Is that important? Yes. Because an intercept form, f of x is equal to a times x minus h plus k. That is the standard form of the intercept form. A is orientation. H is your horizontal shift. And K is your vertical shift. Now, the only thing you need to remember, and you know this from completing the square, when you're talking about your horizontal shift, it's always going to be the opposite. So if that's a negative three, that means three to the right. If it's a positive two, that means it's two to the left. So this can be in the form like that. You put a square there, you put a cube here, you put absolute value marks, you put a log, you put a sign, anything. It's going to follow the same thing. So let's look at a couple. Let's go with f of x is equal to 2 times x plus 3 quantity squared minus 4. Well, we know the parent graph that we talked about before. We know the parent graph of 
x squared looks like that. But this has a horizontal shift of three to the right, or three to the left, sorry, and a vertical shift of four down. We know that A is between is greater than one. Therefore, it's going to be skinny. So with all that being said, let's count two places to the left. Four places down. And it's going to be a skinny parabola. And that is your vertical and horizontal shift. Before we used to say the vertex. The vertex is negative three. And you just bring this down. Negative three. That's supposed to be three, sorry. One, two, three. There. Well, what if you have a fraction? Well, let's put a fraction down here. Let's do f of x is equal to one half x minus six quantity squared plus two. OK, well, our one half is between zero and one. A is between zero and one. Therefore, it's wide. We know we've got a horizontal shift of right six and a vertical shift of two up. So right six, one, two, three, four, five, six, two up. And it's going to be a wide parabola. I'll just draw it in uh green whatever or pink oops it's supposed to be wider than the black one but not much and of course you can back these up with your calculator just to see what it looks like and of course your vertex here is six comma two Now you know how to do this. Now you just have to apply it to other graphs. OK, this is quadratic. This is completing the square. This is what we did in chapter three. Now we're going to we're going to take this same methodology and apply it to other graphs such as. F of X. Is equal to two x minus 2 cubed plus 6. Well, you know that the, sorry, you know that the cubic function looks like this. Because you know your parent graphs. So we're going to have to move this negative two right two and up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So technically, your new 
axes or your new origin is right here. And now you just draw this, but the two, A is greater than one, means that I'm gonna make it skinny, which means that I'm gonna compress along the X axis, and I'm going to stretch along the Y axis. Think of it as a balloon. So it's gonna be compressed this way, so it's going to be skinnier. So it's just going to be a difference in the, so I'll draw it in a, another color. Let's go with, I hadn't used orange, so we're going to make it f of x is equal to. So it's going to be, look like this, except it's going to be skinnier. Like that. OK, so that's a cube function. But what about a absolute value? Let's do absolute value. F of X is equal to one half absolute value of X minus four minus three. Well, the absolute value parent function looks like this. Goes at a 45 degree angle on each side. So I'm going to take this function and I'm going to move it to the right four places. And I'm going to move it down three places. So my new origin is right there, or your vertex. And A is between zero and one. Therefore, it's wide. That means it is stretched along the x-axis and compressed along the y-axis. So it's making it squattier or wider. So that means I'm going to take my, I'm going to color this. Let's see, we'll color this yellow. Okay, so F of X is going to be wider. And that is an absolute value function. And you're going to be doing it with the other functions. You can do it with the square root function. Let me just do that. All these are test questions I'm asking you. Okay. These are the kind of questions I would ask you out of 4.1. You have a work email. So f of x is equal to the square. Let's go with 5 times the square root of x minus 2 plus 6. OK, a is greater than 1. a is greater than 1, so that means it's uh, skinny, which means that I compress along the x-axis and I stretch along the y-axis makes it skinny. My horizontal shift is two to the right. And my vertical shift is two up. Oh, I'm sorry, six up. Now, what does the square root function look like? The square root function looks like this. So I'm going to move it two places to the right, six places up, and 
and it's going to be compressed this way and stretched this way. So it's going to be skinnier. So that means it's going to be going in yellow. It's going to be going like this. Instead of being drawn out, it's going to be more compressed this way. Think of it like a, well, I was going to say a hand saw that you bend like this and it goes up. It bends up, makes a U. The more you push it, the more it goes like a U. And of course, you can check it with your calculator. Now, have you noticed something? Have you noticed that no matter what the function, Somebody tell me, what do you notice in all of those functions? You still like to do the same method for each. Exactly. You do the same method for each. And look at there. The number that's attached to the X is always going to be your horizontal shift. It's attached to the X. The number out here is not attached to the X. It's attached to the function. This is a function, this is a function, this is a function, and this is a function. That number is not attached to the X, it's attached to the function. Six is attached to the function. Three is attached to the function. Six is attached to the function. If it's attached to the X, it's your horizontal shift. If it's attached to the function, it's your vertical shift. If it's in front of the function, it's your A, which means your orientation. I'm going to show you one more. And I'm going to use uh, X squared or we'll use a we use X squared so much. Let's use uh, absolute value. And I'm going to do the F of X in yellow. F of X is equal to. Negative. 3 absolute value of x minus 4 minus 3. So I draw my graph. And we know that it's going to be compared to the absolute value function. There's the parent graph. We know that we've got a three and three is greater than zero. So that means it's going to be skinny. Which means it is compressed along the X axis. And it's going to be stretched. Along the Y axis. We know that this is a horizontal shift of four to the right. And we know that this. Is a oops, I'm sorry. We know that this. Is a vertical shift of three down. So four to the right. One, two, three, four. And three down one, two, three. There's our new vertex. We left out one little thing and I'm going to find another color and we're going to go with light blue. And that blue tells us opposite direction. Opposite direction. This parent function is going concave up, meaning that it's opening upward. So therefore, this means concave down. So I know that my. It's going to be looking this way and it's going to be compressed along the X axis, so that's like a vice. So it's going to look something like 
this. Now you should be able to do domain range. And since we did all that in chapter three, what's the domain of this function? Well, the domain is all real numbers. Range is from negative infinity to negative three. Increasing from negative infinity to negative uh, positive four. Decreasing from four to infinity. And with the parabolas and the line of symmetry is X is equal to four. But see, I don't have to go over that because we did that in chapter three. Oh, I see what he's doing now. Yeah. Chapter three is the meat of, you know, the complete and the square ties everything together. Now, of course, you can't do complete and the square with a absolute value or a cubic function or, but what the quadratic function gives you is the methodology for the vertical and the horizontal what? Shifts. That's what it gives you. So all that we did in chapter three, doing the quadratic, as long as you put it in this form, you have a vertical and a horizontal shift and an orientation. And all you gotta know is your parent graphs, your squares, your thirds, your absolute value, your um, radical, and of course the absolute value again, and it tells you everything you need to know. My goodness, Miss Hollister, what's going on? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. That's all right. Now, I think I've just went over 4.1, but let's see and let's see what let's see what they teach you in 4.1. That is not 4.1. That is sampling distributions. Now, this is the way they teach you old school. And I don't do that because that confuses a lot of students. But if you want to look at it and see if you can figure out what they're doing, they're basically establishing the vertical shift. OK, and I've already showed you that if it's attached to the function, it's your vertical shift. If it's attached to the X, which would be inside the absolute value marks, it would be a horizontal shift. And there's where they're starting to show you the intercept value. There's your horizontal shift. They're going to show you H. Right here, there's H. OK, they're going to get to the end and they'll show you what I'm I'm showing you. OK, the three, that's a horizontal shift of three to the left and four down, three to the left and four down. OK. And of course, you can check all this with your. With your calculator, what's the so you can do this one right here. I'm going to show you right quick. This is your goal. You should be able to go. OK, looks like this. Uh, positive 55, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 55 is right there. And we've got a horizontal of 4,500. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 4,500. So it'd be about right there. We know it's a regular parabola because that's a one in front of the parentheses and we know it's open and downward. So it looks something like this. And that's what they're wanting you to be able to do. Now, of course, what if they ask you for the X intercepts? We well, just solve it. X intercept zero is Y, right? So X intercepts zero is equal to y therefore negative x minus 55 quantity squared plus 4500 is equal to zero and this is just like you did in chapter three negative x 
minus 55 quantity squared is equal to negative 4,500 divided by negative one, X minus 55, hold on. X minus 55 is equal to 4,500. Take the square root of both sides. X minus 55 is equal to positive or negative square root of 4,500. And X is equal to positive or negative 4,500 plus 55. Now, of course, you can do that in the calculator. I'm not going to do that, but that's, you, you learned how to do this in chapter three with completing the square. Okay, and that would be that X intercept there and this X intercept right there. You know that the Y intercept is 4,500. So that's 4,500. And of course your vertex is positive 55 and 4,500. Oh shoot. Let me see, did I, did I do that? Hold on a second, make sure. Where's my PowerPoint? Yeah, I did. That's 4,500, positive 4,500. So you should be able, it says, and, and they'll gra they graph it, and there it is. It's up in the first quadrant. They're comparing it to the, to the, to the negative at zero, but they moved it right there. There's 4,500 right about here. And of course, you can do increasing, decreasing, domain, range. You can do all that. I might not ask you that. Let's see what else they got. All right, this one you would do on a calculator. I can tell you that right now. Whenever you're dealing with exponents like this, I can tell you right now, and they do that in 4.2 and 4.3, you're going to graph it on a calculator. You're not going to be able to do, you're not going to be able to sketch that graph, okay? You're going to have to use a calculator. Now, what did we use before calculators? Well, we used plotting points, and you had to actually do the math, okay? But now you don't have to do that. So this this problem, you would take your handy dandy calculator, and you would do y is equal to, and make sure you hit clear five or six times to get rid of everything. And that's going to be 4.947, 4.947x raised to the 0.495, 0.495, and graph. And you might hit, hit zoom, standard. There it is. And you would graph that on a number line, I mean on a, graph or a test or whatever. Let's hit zoom zero. That's a little bit better. Okay. So when you're talking about an exponential, are you talking about just graph it? This one, uh, you know that's the same type graph, but this one has a what? A horizontal shift of 10 to the left and no vertical shift so that means that 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 hold on that graph right there is going to move 10 places to the left it's going to be over here somewhere and it's going to be since that 4.97 i don't think let's see okay i'm sorry I thought we were doing it. Yeah, there it is. 4.9947. That's the basic right there. So it's going to move to the left. And it's going to be, uh, let's see, it's going to move to the left 10 places. So let's move down. Well, they didn't do it 10 places.
it should have moved to the left 10 places. So it'd be over here somewhere. Yeah, the bases have changed, see? The bases have changed. So it moved over a little bit. They just don't show it in quadrant two, which they should. Okay, here's where they're comparing the K is one, two and a half. Well, one is your parent graph. Two, if K is two, it's gonna be skinny. And if it's one half, it's gonna be wider. And we talked about that. Okay, we can do this with a, um, a rational function or a rational squared function. Let's do a rational function. Let's do, let's just go to here. Let's do one, I want you to do this one. F of X, and I want to do that in yellow because that's where I'm on my finished graph is going to be in yellow. F of X is equal to one over X plus two quantity squared minus four. Now, you're not going to use a calculator. You're not going to use anything. All you're going to do is draw a graph using the horizontal and vertical shift and the parent graph. Now, one is one, so it's going to be the parent graph. You're not going to be using any multiplier or negative. You're just going to draw the parent graph with a horizontal and a vertical shift. Sketch that. So on the news where a few of the states are sending their uh, votes because they're finding out that some of their votes were not tabulated correctly. Wow. <laughs> and no comment. Did you so, see Go ahead. What? Did you see the vaccine? Did the what? Did you see the uh, about the vaccine? Yeah. For 99.8% yeah. survival rate, we need a vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, regardless of survival rate, I'm, you know, four days I after. Know, I know. I just think it's, <laughs> I just think it's funny how we need a vaccine for 99.8% nine especially for y'all y'all are 18 and below some of y'all so that's 99.9 .9 or 99.8 
for me, 59 and below, it's 99.7 or 99.8 or 99.6. So I think I think we have just witnessed. I think we have just witnessed a lot of people don't realize what we've witnessed in the last year with China invading actually the world and basically given one side of the aisle a weapon to use for the presidential election. And they used it with the media with a 99.8% survival rate. And if you think about it, it's really sad. But I still think it ain't over till it's over because I still think that the whole mail-in ballot was a scam, and I'll say it to this day. But anyway, I have a parent graph. It looks like that. Except I've got a horizontal shift of two to the left and a vertical shift of four what? Down. Down. So I'm going to go two to the left, one, two, and I'm going to go four down. Now, for this one, I'm going to draw a X and Y axes. I'm going to draw it in a light green because my son borrowed my... See, he didn't bring it back. I'm kick it in the butt. Um, use a staple. I'm going to draw... That ain't going to work. Hold on a second. Dang old pole puncher. I'm going to draw an X and Y axis so you can see the function better. Now that light green X and Y axis is there so you can draw the function because you're just going to transfer this function because this parent graph because of one doesn't change. You're going to draw this function down here on this. So the yellow Basically, and that is the answer to sketching this. Now, I have just went over, let's see, one, Two, three, four, five, six. Those are six test questions that I could ask you. And it'll be just like that. You'll see them in the homework. What does this function look like? And it'll give you that, and it'll give you a multiple choice of one in this quadrant, it'll be in this quadrant, it'll be in this quadrant, or it may be in this quadrant pointing downward, and they'll ask you to match it up with the correct answer. Real simple, not a lot of, and the reason it's not, it's not difficult is because we spent so much time on completing the square, and it got you ready for that. You're welcome. Uh, let's see, what else? Okay, let's go ahead and write this down. And I'm going to go ahead and we're going to apply, we're going to call this, I'll get back to that in just a second. We're going to call this odd or even functions. An odd function, I mean, an even function, we, we know from the parent graph, x squared, f of x, 
is equal to x squared. Get your parent graph uh, handout out. The one I told you to write looks like that. The ending behavior of an odd function, an even function, is going to be going in the same direction. It's called ending behavior. The ending behavior of an even function is going to be going like that. Okay, so if you want to know what a function looks like, and it's x to the 15th or 16th power, if it's x to the 16th power, it's going to look like that some way, some form. x to the third, we know from the parent graph, looks like what? Looks like that. The ending behavior for a odd function is opposite direction. So if you are given x to the 15th power, you know that it's going to be going in opposite directions. Now that's how you tell graphically what a x to the third or x to the second or x to the odd, x to the even. What is it going to look like? And this is called ending behavior. Now, how do you check algebraically? You check algebraically by this test and this test. If a function is even, it is symmetric around the y-axis. If a function is even, that means it is symmetric around the y-axis. And you use the test f of negative x is equal to f of x. So if you plug a negative x into the function and you get the actual function you started with, that means it's an even function. And it is symmetrical around the y axis, like a parabola. If it's an odd function, That means it's going to be symmetric around the origin. That means that f of negative x, if you plug in negative x, will give you the negative function. Now this is algebraic. In other words, they're going to they're going to give you a couple of problems, and it'll have basically uh, tell whether the function is even or odd. And you're going to have to actually plug in negative x and see what it gives you. That's algebraic. If you've got a function and their arrows going both the same way, then chances are you got an even function. If you've got arrows going the opposite directions, chances are you've got an odd function. So here's the example. Right here, I'll just hit slideshow, current slide. All right, y is equal. y is equal to 2x squared over x squared plus 1. And our two tests are, if it's even, f of negative x is equal to f of x. Odd, f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. 
So let's go ahead and do this. And this is a test question. So I'm going to plug in two parentheses squared parentheses squared plus one. And here I'm going to plug in a negative X. So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to highlight that negative X pink. And I'm going to plug that in here. And right there. Now what is negative X? Squared. X squared. So that's going to be 2x squared over x squared plus 1. Well, I got what I started with. Therefore, this one is an even function. Now again, most of y'all should have seen this before. If you haven't, just plug and chug. And it is symmetric around the y-axis, so it is, it is even. That's what they're doing right there. Oh, negative, I'm sorry. Negative Y. This one may be, this one may be odd. So F of X or Y is equal to 2X squared over X squared plus one. And let's plug in a negative X. Well, we did that. It's, it's supposed to come out odd. I don't understand what they're doing here. All, they, all you're supposed to do is plug in negative X. That one's neither. Let me do that one. Let's do this one. Y is equal to X to the third minus three X. I think they're doing something different from what I'm doing. Y is equal to X to the third minus three X. Now our test says that if you plug in negative X, F of negative X is equal to F of X, that would be even. And L negative F of X is equal to F of negative X, in other words, plug it in, that's odd. So I'm going to plug in a negative X. So Y is equal to negative X to the third power minus three times negative X. I plugged in a negative X wherever it's right here. I plugged in a negative X wherever there was a um, X. Now what's negative X cubed? Well, that's going to be negative X cubed. And then positive 3x. Well, that looks nothing like that. So we can forget that one. Now we've already got f of negative x. This is f of negative x. f of negative x is equal to this. So all I have to do now is put a negative in front of this, and that's going to be negative x cubed minus 3x. That's that right there. Distribute this to get a negative x cubed 
plus 3x. Is that equal to that? Yes. Therefore, it's odd. Now, you should have done this in, in Algebra 2. Um, a lot of you should have, you know, plugged in negative. And it's, again, it revolves around these two rules. I don't know what they're doing in these slides, but that's what you're doing. Plug in negative x into the function. If it's equal to the original function, it is even. If it's in, if it is, if that f of negative x is, is it equal to the negative function, then it's odd. And that's one or two test questions on the test from 4.1. Let's see what else they got in 4.1. That's a circle. That's going to be symmetric. Though. That's a circle. And that's it. That's 4.1. Circles are always symmetric. I don't think I have to explain that. All right. Excuse me. Let's look at 4.2. I thought I had 4.2 already out. There it is. Oh my lord. I thought we went over this a long time ago. Okay. This is this is no, no, I'm not even going to use the folder. Okay, 4.2. 4.2 is basically a fancy way of writing functions. That's it. That's what it is. Back in pre-algebra a long time ago, you were given two two uh, terms, two functions, or two uh, terms. X plus three and two X minus one. And you were told to add those functions. So that's X plus three plus two X minus one x plus 2x is 3x, and 3 minus 1 is 2. You were asked to subtract these two terms. x plus 3 minus 2x minus 1, x plus 3 minus 2x plus 1. x minus 2x is negative x, 3 plus 1 is 4. You were told to, to multiply these guys. First, 2x times 2x times x is 2x squared plus, let's see, that'd be minus x plus 6x minus 3. And you would combine that and get 2x squared minus 1 plus 5x minus 3. And you were taught all this in pre-algebra. Now, this is not sophisticated enough for you. You need more sophistication. So now, you're going to say, well, if f of x is equal to x plus 3 and g of x is equal to 
2x minus 1. Find f plus g of x. And that's basically that right there. Well, give me f minus g of x. Well, that's basically this right here. Well, give me f times g of x. No, well, that's what this is right here. Now, f divided by g, well, that's fine, but you really can't do anything with f divided by g, but I'm going to do f divided by g right here. Is f is x plus 3 divided by 2x minus 1. And you really can't do anything with that, so you just leave it as it is. But the one that gives people the most problems is composition. Y'all know how to do these. These are things that y'all knew how to do back in pre-algebra, algebra one. But what is composition? Well, composition is represented by a big dot in the middle that's open, an open dot, open circle. And I like to tell students it's just like fog f of x is equal to x plus 1. g of x is equal to x minus 6. And I want you to do f composed of g, fog. And I want you to do gog, golf, g composed of f. Now, the first thing I tell students to do is I highlight that F. That F is first. So that means since F is first, I'm going to rewrite F with BA parentheses. So I'm going to rewrite x plus 1 with a big set of parentheses. There's where the x was, plus 1. And this means, and I'm going to highlight, let me, the pink, I'm going to rewrite my formula or equation with a big set of parentheses. I just did that. And now g of x, I'll highlight that yellow. g means that I'm going to plug g into the parentheses. So I'm going to take that x minus 6. And I'm going to plug it in right there. And now you just finish it. X minus 6 plus 1. X minus 6 plus 1 is minus 5. That's how you do composition. All right, now I want you to do G of F. G composed of F.
Then I rewrote G with a big set of parentheses. And now I'm going to plug in F. And I get X minus 5. Now it's not always going to come out to be the same. Question. Did you say it's always going to be the same? I'm sorry, what? Did you say it's always going to be the same? No, I said it's not always going to be the same. Oh, okay. Oh. Again, that's something composition should be something that you should be familiar with. What if I gave you F composed of F? Using the same What if I gave you F composed of F? Well, that would be F composed of F. Well, I draw a big set of parentheses plus one and plug in X plus one. And that would give me X plus two as an answer. What if I did G composed of G? I would rewrite parentheses minus six, and I would plug X minus six in. And that would give me X minus what, 12? And that's how you do F composed of F and G composed of G. Hopefully, some of y'all are going, oh, yeah, I remember doing that. I was just confused when I did it. Well, it's not. It's just plugging and chugging. I'm looking to see if anything else. I'm looking. Here's a good problem. Try that. Sorry. I done lost it. Where did I go? Heck gum, what happened? What did the problem say? Not that one. I don't think it's that one, is it? There it is. Is that it? I think that's it. So f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 5. And g of x is equal to 2x squared minus 4.
So you can't do anything as far as adding them because you're just going to get f plus g of x is equal to the square root of x minus 5 plus 2x squared minus 4. So you can put that in some kind of order and you could say, well, the, the squared function comes first. So that's going to be equal to 2x squared plus square root of x minus 5 minus 4. And you would graph that. We know it's going to be ending behavior, both of them going in the same direction. But let's go ahead and graph it. Y is equal to clear. That's going to be 2x squared, 2x squared plus the square root Wait a minute. What did I hit square root? Let me go back. Plus second square root. There we go. Of x minus five. Right arrow. Minus four. And graph. I'm going to do a zoom standard. And that's not it. We do a zoom fit. Okay, we got a function going right there. Let me zoom out. Okay, there it is right there. And you hit trace, you can find out what you need to hit trace. Right there. And you can find out what you need to there. Let's see what the question is asked after that. says graph division. OK, so graph the division. So y is equal to f divided by, make sure it said f divided by. Yeah, f divided by g. Well, f divided by g is going to be the square root of x minus 5 divided by 2x squared minus 4. So y is equal, and I'll do this on the second one, parentheses, second, and we're going to do x minus 5. Close parentheses. Divided by parentheses 2x squared minus 4. 2x squared two that's supposed to be a square. Second insert. There. And that's a minus symbol, isn't it? 
2x squared minus 4, and graph. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Zoom, standard. Might have to erase the first one. So I'll get rid of that one. Graph. Zoom. Standard. Not going to get much help there. How about zoom zero? There it is. It looks nothing like, you know, the other one. Let's see what else they're going to ask. What is the domain of f of g? f divided by g. We'll go back to f divided by g. Let's do a trace. Let me zoom back a little bit. Zoom out. I'm going to move over a little bit. Hit graph. Zoom. Sorry. Zoom out. There it is. Now hit trace. And a domain is going to be right there. So 5.07 to infinity. So 5.07 to infinity. Or you can just plug in, set the denominator equal to zero. Set the denominator equal to zero. I'm trying to get there. Mike, please, Miss Hollister. 2x squared is equal to 4 divided by 2 divided by 2. x is equal to square root of 2. That's going to give you your x intercept. Well, that's going to give you what you can't use. And you can use negative and positive four or square root of two. But the best way to do it is just start do it with the calculator. So and then range is gonna be let me move it. Range is going to go up to 0 0.01. Very small. That's the highest that it'll go up to. So this is the range is going to be. Hold on a second. There. The range is going to be from 0 to. 0 0.015 and then the domain is going to be from 5.07 to infinity. Okay, that's a wrap. Let's go ahead and let's see, shut her down. Let me take the roll. And see what we're going. I think the test is due tonight, isn't it?